In this next section, we're looking at change in momentum and impulse. Let's first look at change in momentum. Suppose that there's an event that changes the momentum of an object. In the beginning, the object is moving with a momentum which we'll call P sub zero or P naught. Something will occur that changes its momentum by an amount delta P and the resulting momentum is PF just after the event. Now remember that momentum is a vector quantity so delta P can change not only the magnitude but also the direction of the object from P naught to PF. So PF could be pointing in a different direction as well as having a different size to P sub zero. The equation we use for this is P naught plus delta P equals PF. And remember that P is a vector and that these little vector signs are implied. So always be careful of signs or directions that are given when um, calculating change in momentum. We've considered momentum change. Now let's try to understand what impulse is. The equation that we just looked at is the momentum change equation. That P naught plus a change in momentum delta P leads to a momentum for an object of P sub F. Where does this change in momentum come from? Well, Newton's first law tells us that the velocity and as we now know the momentum of an object won't change unless the object is affected by an, a non-zero external force. So this change in momentum is mediated by a force. Now that force acts on the object for a certain amount of time, changes its momentum, and then has to go away. Momentum has been changed. So for example, a ball is rolling, you stop it. You only apply a force for a certain amount of time. Then the ball no longer moves and the force is no longer necessary. So we write that the momentum um, is changed from P0 to PF by the addition of or by the application of an impulse I. The impulse is equal to force times the amount of time that the force was applied. I equals F delta T. We discussed units for momentum. Now let's consider the unit for impulse. Well, impulse is very closely related to momentum. As we saw, it's actually equal to the change in momentum. And there's no specially named unit for impulse, just as there's not one for momentum. We just use the product of the units of force and time. So the unit of force is the Newton, the unit of time is the second. So we combine these two and we can say that the unit of impulse is just Newton seconds. But remember that the Newton is just a kilogram meter per second squared. We'll put that here. So when we multiply that by seconds, we eliminate one of the seconds from the denominator and we just end up with kilogram meters per second. It's exactly the same as with the momentum and uh, completely to be expected since the impulse is just a change in momentum. Let's now consider the implications of impulse being force times time. Now Clearly, an impulse applied will achieve a certain change in momentum. But how you get there does make a difference. I can achieve the same impulse by applying a very large force over a very small amount of time. Or I can get it by applying a small force over a long period of time. Either way, I achieve the same change in momentum, but the effect on the object whose momentum is being changed is quite different. Let's take an example. 
Suppose you're in a car. The car is traveling at 100 kilometers per hour towards a wall. You have a few choices. One is you decide to take your time and brake very gently, and very, which means very slowly. So your time here is very, very large. As you can see from this graph, for long periods of time, the force applied is going to be very small. You could wait a little bit longer. You feel like your reactions are pretty good and you don't mind stomping on the brakes a little bit harder. So you can brake over a shorter period of time. And you see here that there's a, a greater amount of force that's being applied, but you managed to change the momentum of the car all right. Um, just took a little less time and took a little bit more force. But if you fail to apply the brakes, you're going to come in contact with the wall. And the amount of time that your momentum will, ch the, the amount of time required to change your momentum will be very small. And as a consequence, you and your car will experience tremendous forces. So what does that mean? It means that the change of momentum can be the same, the impulse applied can be the same, but depending on how much time one takes to apply the force that achieves the change in momentum can make a huge difference. If the time is great, the forces are small, but if the time is small, the forces can be quite huge. What's important here, and this is very important in terms of the design of things for safety, as we'll see in a moment, is that if you can make a small change in the time, you can make a big change in the force. So, uh, as you can see from this, this is a fairly small change of time here, but you can see that the forces drop off very rapidly with just slight increases in time. Here's some real world applications of the trade off between force and time to achieve a particular impulse. And remember what we said that. Achieving the same change of momentum doesn't imply the same effect on the object whose momentum is being changed. So we can take advantage of that idea. For example, in car design or in jumping and landing or in catching balls, the idea is to minimize pain and injury or even death. And so to do that, we're looking at things that maximize the time of an impulse and minimize the force. So what we see with airbags and crush zones and how one catches a ball or how one lands bending one's knees or rolling, for example, all of those things achieve that increase in time and a decrease in force. On the other hand, we may want to increase the force that we're applying and we apply that when we consider things like boxing and martial arts or hitting balls such as golf balls or baseballs and so on. Um, the other part of this is in hitting a ball we're also interested in actually increasing the impulse overall so it's not just the force with which we hit the object but the amount of time we can remain connected to it. So that's another application where we're using force and time to increase the change in momentum. So a lot of this stuff uh, can be researched with simple um, um, inquiries on the web. There's a lot of good videos on all of this. Um, and uh, you know, I just recommend uh, you know, looking at a few of these things in your spare time.